Hey guys, welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Restoring Early Black and White Tube Televisions. In this installment, we're going to get back on the top side of the chassis and do some tube testing and poke around a bit. Now, earlier I talked about doing this project potentially without a tube tester by swapping some of the tubes. There are some duplicates, 6K6s, 6AU6s, 6AG5s. There are a few unique, unique tubes. Another option would be just buy some new tubes. However, I do have a tube tester, so let's employ it and check some tubes before we go chasing ghosts and circles because we haven't because we have some bad tubes in the set. I started pulling them out and noticed something. If you go way back early on, when I was going over the chassis, I mentioned about this giant power resistor in the high voltage box and how virtually every one I've ever encountered has been bad. Well, I had this set running a little while ago. The tubes are still a bit warm. This is cold. Our horizontal linearity is kind of screwy and uh, I suspect that that is open. Now, another thought has occurred to me. So we've been fighting this issue of not quite enough height. It's gotten better and better as we've been replacing caps, tweaking things. But I do have the control nearly maxed out. I should have some more headroom than that. So that's one reason I'm checking tubes is maybe it's because of a bad tube. But also, it could be because of that resistor. Why? The boost voltage for the vertical is derived from the horizontal circuit. That is a key component to the horizontal circuit, so it being out could affect things. Although the boost voltage is looking better now that I've done some recapping. But there's another potential issue. So here's, you've got to use your brain now and then. A vertical issue can be caused by the horizontal being too wide. In other words, say our vertical was great and then something went wrong and the horizontal scan became much wider than it should be, it's going to make the vertical shrink. So perhaps we have too much width and that's causing the height to artificially look lower so let's let's continue to work them over the horizontal circuit. I, I still have a little bit more recapping to do below, but I also want to check what's going on in this box. So I want to take out the damper tube, the horizontal output tube, and there's a few tubes outside the box that affect it as well. I'm not worried about the high voltage rectifier right now. And let's see if this resistor is indeed open. It might not have been so obvious with them all installed in the chassis, but this set does have quite a few tubes, and there's still five more between the high voltage rectifier and the tubes on the power supply chassis, so there are quite a few to test. And some of them are pretty big. This is the horizontal output tube, the 6 BG6, the biggest power tube in the set. That's what drives primary the flyback. And here we have a 6V6. Used for the horizontal oscillator of all things, a couple 6K6s and a 6SN7 or two. Here's our 5V4 damper. Gotten a little pricey because the audio crowd likes these for their amplifier projects. Now this this is early days. This is before there was a 6W4, 6AX4, or any of the Later, very common damper tubes. The early ones use a 5V4. Some use the 6AS7 triode of all things. The rest are a bunch of miniatures. Uh, some super common 6AL5, 6AU6, 6AG5s. Well, that was uneventful. The two 6N7s tested marginal, so I replaced those. One 6AG5 was marginal, replaced that. The rest tested very good. Dusted off the chassis a bit more, cleaned off the tubes, reinstalled most of them. Also removed this ion trap magnet from the neck, cleaned that off a bit better, and discovered it's a rebuild. There is a seam here. You can see that line there, meaning... They cut open the glass and installed a new gun, sucked out the air, and uh, sealed it off. 
so it's the original D but uh, it was rebuilt uh, yeah curious I imagine it would have been initially built with a brand new CRT because it has that matching D as everything else uh, it sure looks like a rebuild so they must have gotten it rebuilt and then reinstalled it right in the chassis <laughs> or I'm mistaken about it being a rebuild but it sure sure looks like one uh, anyways onto the high voltage box so I'm going to test this in a moment but I'm also going to take this off and let's clean it off in there and inspect things it's very very dusty I also want to point out there is one adjustment down in there I'm not sure how you get to it there's also one in here that's with I think the one down there might be linearity <laughs> in a very long flexible adjustment tool because it's right it's right down in there, and it's not wide enough to get a tool in, so you got to come at an angle and kind of <laughs> bend around over onto it. <laughs> or maybe you can adjust it from the other side. I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's open. It's measuring around a mega ohm. The value's kind of jumping around. It's got to be corroded, broken wire inside of that thing. Where is it used? It is used right there. It's tapped, so you can select the position uh, for the best linearity. So if it was the outermost value, it'd be 6,300 ohms. Or 5,800, 5,300. None of those are standard values. So I will dig through my power resistors. I'll try to parallel some up. Some like that. I think I have some 7,500s. I can throw a smaller value, 20K or something like that, in parallel with it. I think I've done in the past to get in the ballpark. Obviously not critical to the set working, but... It should fix our linearity issue. It's very stretched on one side of the screen. I love when they design things with servicing in mind. To get this box off, you don't have to take the whole thing off. The side comes off with a few screws. And then we can get right in there. So what do I want to do well aside from replacing this guy? Clean that out from uh, the static buildup from the high voltage circuit attracts a ton of dust so this is just let's blow this out or use compressed air I'm using a soft brush use a shop vac whatever eventually if enough of this built up it could start uh, causing some problems with arcing and corona and whatnot so High voltage rectifier, that is a 500 picofarad, 10, 15, 20,000 volt cap. This set runs at about 9,000, so it's probably a 15,000 cap. Very, very. Alright, so what's in here? There's our high voltage rectifier. Comes in the top, goes out the bottom, and goes to the pitcher tube. Also goes to this guy, that is a 500 picofarad high voltage filter cap, known as a doorknob cap, commonly. Uh, it's probably rated for 20,000 volts. Bolt on either end, one's going to the high voltage, one going to ground. All these high voltage connections, you notice they're blobby. You don't want any sharp points. That will cause uh, charge to build up and get uh, discharged through it. So, if you ever have to replace something like this, put a big blob of solder on on your connections. Of course that's our flyback transformer. This is that damper resistor we're going to replace. There is a fuse in here. There's probably a quarter amp to protect the flyback. And there is a coil in here that is the width adjustment. It's in parallel with one of the windings on the flyback. It tunes the operation of it a little bit which is a minor effect on the width. If you ever need to adjust this, don't expect the width to go from a couple inches to full width. It might vary it from one extreme to the other, 10-15%, something like that. So you can start rotating and you barely even perceive any change. It, it's not meant to do a radical change. It's meant for very, very fine tuning. Alright, I'm going to keep uh, cleaning out all this dust. It's been attracted by the high voltage. And then unmount this guy. There's a long screw going down the middle, just get yourself a flat bladed screwdriver and then screw it. They do still make resistors like this. 
they're not quite so big. Well, or I shouldn't say that. You can't. Oh, I do have some left. Excellent. That's a 25 watt resistor. This is a modern 50 watt. <laughs> Even so, it's smaller. But it's close enough. I might have to... I think I, I think these come with a mounting kit, so I should have the screw. It's a little bit shorter, otherwise I could cut the screw down. But the nice thing is at least these are available and you can reuse the mounting. And, yeah, I bought a bunch of these. I believe if I put this 20K in parallel with this 7500, it gets me in the ballpark of this value. And these leads are splayed out and you can just put them right through these eyelets. It works out very nice. That's why I bought a bunch of these because I was restoring a bunch of these sets and I was encountering so many bad ones. I just bought up a whole bunch of these. No, they are not cheap. They are not cheap. Right, Ten bucks each, something like that. But it's really nice. They're available, still made by Omite, and you can mount them right here. Otherwise, it just, I don't know, drill holes, terminal strips, something like that. Huh, that's better. It's cleaned up very nicely. Now, if you ever do clean inside a high voltage box, be very, very careful around the flyback, especially. There are some very fine wires coming out from it, going to these lugs on the phenolic here. Uh, on the other side, down in there, just be careful, <laughs> or just avoid it at all uh, entirely if you're not sure about uh, what you're doing. It's cleaned up very nicely, as you can see. This is all insulating. I uh, like that it says 816 for the two designator on the socket. That is a really old school designator for a 1B3. And finally, here is my new power resistor with the 20k in parallel. Could not find a shorter mounting screw so I added some insulated spacers at the bottom here to get it up higher. Now I'll get this, don't let this throw you off, this really does not get all that hot. This is a 50 watt, this is 25 and I think this even was even over specced. Uh, alrighty, so we can pop our tubes back in. Everything's discharged, nothing to worry about. I didn't do anything special, it just bleeds off when you turn the set off. And where's our 5v4? Here it is. I love these old type, I'm to bend my parallel resistor, that that might be an issue. It's a little close to the 5v4. Twist it away a little there. I like these uh, old school Coke bottle tubes. It's a nice touch. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? Alright, now we can cover it up so nobody will ever see it again. <laughs> I'll put the side back on. I'll uh, get everything hooked back up. And then fire this thing back up. And curious to see what difference is that going to make. Here is what I got when I turned the set back on. If you look close, you'll notice something. I have less width. There's actually a little bit of darkness on either side of it. And of course, the sink is way off. And once again, we're going to go back to that coil on the back and adjust the frequency. Get that horizontal lock back. There we go. Let's see, just the vertical, get that brightness, Things will adjust. Here's a horizontal drive. The linearity is better. We had to set on its side before, but it was 
really stretched out. Now I need to get a bit more width though. Of course the width is a width adjustment. This is the drive I'm adjusting here. I'll have to go through the exact procedure as outlined to get that better. Now let's see what the vertical is the height. And still still not happy about that. It's stretched at the top. Now the controls near their maximum extent. Well, Alright. Now, I still have some original electrolytics in the set, still have some little paper caps, still have some resistors to check, so keep going. I've gone through the obvious stuff, though, but so we're starting to see some of these circuits are interrelated, so it's not always so cut and dry. And there are a lot of little minor things you can tweak. I'm adjusting the ion trap, you adjust this for maximum brightness, but notice, and also we lose focus a bit. Let me adjust focus control. All the stuff interacts the yoke, the electro the electromagnetic focus coil, the ion trap magnet. But bit by bit by bit by bit by bit we are getting better and better. A lot of background noise, though. Oh man, that tube, one tube, the 6J6 on the tuner is still wonky. I'm wiggling it right now. Well, you see that? Oh yeah, the tuner pins are absolutely filthy too. You can see as I start to change channels for a second, it looks really good. Then it gets kind of crummy looking. No matter. Let's try a different channel altogether. There's four. Four looks better than three did. Strange set to operate. These early sets tend to be the way the, f the contrast works, especially if you get a little bit too low at the contrast, it just kind of fades away. But right before it does, it looks really pretty good. You get too high and it gets washed out and blurry. You go way too high, it gets all crazy. A little tough to find a sweet spot. Now it also could be we haven't done the AGC circuit yet. There's a big cap in there. I think it's a 0.5 or 0.25 microfarad. Not gonna be having an effect on this. Anyways, I am happy with the overall progress. All right, time to get back under the chassis and do more recapping.